There we go. Hello, everybody. How are you? It's Alex. I'm uh, doing just fine, thank you. Uh, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna. Well, oh, there are a whole bunch of people here. Boy, see, we got a, I got a bunch of notes. People write me about this when they don't have uh, uh, can't get to the show. Uh, they write me and tell me, like Len the Frisco told me he couldn't be on, and a couple other people wrote me and said they couldn't be on. And uh, Paula's not going to be here today because she's out visiting relatives. It's holiday time. It's vacation time and so on. So we sometimes get less people. But look, I mean, we right now we've got eight people in the waiting room. So we better get to them before they all come after me. Let me see here. Admit all. There's uh, Charlie Wallace is there. Marjorie. Charlene Solis. Uh, Andrew Joy, uh, the lovely and attractive um, Brian Neary, uh, uh, and uh, uh, on her iPad, uh, Arlene Solis, and Francine Witt, and Jeff Stein. Wow, uh, you know, for a bunch of people, we got a nice crowd here. And, of course, as always, the ever-popular and the voice that launched a thousand ships, Edward Burke. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm -hmm. I have a few things more for you to say. They they had a they had a reel and they showed all of uh, uh, our gang and how they passed away and it showed all of them and they showed frog was it Froggy Froggy the guy with the voice yeah <laughs> I thought of uh, Edward then uh -huh. didn't they, didn't they, no 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 there was an, another person they called Foghorn who was a singer. And mm. ain't, ain't got no home. Sound like a frog. I said, mm. like a frog. Yeah. Do you, anybody remember that? No. Well, well, Rush, Lim Leghorn. Rush Limborn used to play that, but I don't, I don't remember the name of it. Did he really? It's a great, yeah. it's a great song. Did you listen to Rush Limbaugh and Alex no, Bennett? No, my my, uh, my mother used to listen to it. Oh, okay. I, I listened to Rush Limbaugh. I, in the early years, especially, I found him exceedingly entertaining. I mean, as a broadcaster, listen, looking at the art of another broadcaster, I thought he was terrific. You know, was it back when he was on welfare? Uh, no, no, <laughs> no. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's see. What does it say? It. What is your what's your uh, t-shirt? Oh, I just did it for the cash. You just <laughs> the cash. Yeah, the cash. And for the cash. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Oh, boy. And Marjorie has her T-shirt. Show them your T-shirt. There we go. There you go. Hey. Nice. Advertise. Nice. Especially on your tits. <laughs> Which she still has after all these years. And I can tell you from personal Viewing, they haven't fallen an inch. Okay, that's the deer. I know we're family, but not that. What? <laughs> we're family, but not that close family. I, I didn't know you knew Kamala that well. <laughs> yeah. me now. So, Brian, are you in your new place right now? No, I'm in my office working. I should know that because that's an office ceiling. Yes. You know. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. That's an office ceiling. I used to have a nice view, and then they just they put this huge generator in front of my office. I don't know why. <laughs> Do I look any better today? Than what? <laughs> I, bought, I bought a new camera. Oh. <laughs> it's a new Brio 4K, but it's the the Brio MX. It's about twice mm -hmm. as clear as the old one. It's and got it, it's got good color balance. Huh? It's got good color balance. Yeah, it's got great color balance. Yeah, it looks it's good. Very natural. Yeah. But, you know, it's amazing how many of you look pretty damn good with whatever, you know, yeah. in, in some cases, the, the camera that came with your with a, with your computer, you know. For iPad. I'm using an iPad, too. Yeah. I have an iPad. <laughs> iPads look great, you know, so... Anyway, uh, so there are going to be fewer people here today because a lot of people just, they, they need to get out and do stuff. I don't know why. We don't have a life. so It's too high. 
It's too hard. <laughs> oh, you know, we, Marjorie and I, Marjorie was very nice. She's been going to me with me to my uh, leukemia <laughs> appointments, okay, which we had today, and it all turned out great. They drew the blood. They said basically no change in what, you know, in what you have. You're not showing any symptoms. Good. Come see us now in four months. I predicted it, right, Marjorie? This yep. was three months. I said he's going to say four months. And next time he'll say six months if, if there's no change. So, but it was very good. It's a nice doctor. She likes him. Very nice. You no. Know? Uh, and uh, does his stuff. And that's it. You know, we went and got the blood drawn and all of that. And they took it out of my wrist, my hand rather. And there's no black and blue mark there. So we're cool. And uh, so Marjorie saw me there, but then she, she, you know, if I have her come to me to with an appointment to, or she comes with me to an appointment, I have to take her out to lunch. And um, your point yeah. is, so we went out Good. with a very nice yeah. lunch. But did the you let her supersize? The problem was, <laughs> I had to walk home. Now, I have a certain walking problem, but it, when you, it's hot, I'm just waddling along, you know, and it was just, it was not comfortable, was it, Marjorie? No. No. So we went mm -hmm. down, we went down one street that was shady, but then no other streets had shade. So we were, you know, and here in New York, you know, it's sometimes, oh, I don't know where you live exactly, uh, uh, Charlie, or, or any of you, but sometimes when you're walking down the street, you're walking on what grass sometimes or dirt or whatever here it's like concrete everywhere and when it's hot francine will attest to this when it's hot that con concrete just radiates yeah. and and you see that you've got to walk a block down a street that's got nothing but sunlight and you're going oh my god i've got to do that you know mm -hmm. it's pretty it's pretty brutal <clears throat> How's the weather up in Maine? Uh, it's nice today, about about seventy five. Oh, it's screw pretty me. warm. Blow me. <laughs> <laughs> you could go out here on the ocean. You can jump in the water. That'll cool you down. Yeah, well, I mean, but it, you know, it's nice. It's nice up in Maine. Uh, yeah. You know, it's but it's it's not nice here. It's it's <clears> been it's been it's been like this for what? Two months? Yeah. I haven't turned off our air condition <clears throat> in two months. The only time I turn it off is when we leave. And that's only because when we go somewhere and we're eating and whatever, just before I leave to come back to the apartment, I get on my phone and I turn it back on. You know, but that's the only time it's been off. It's, you know, it's on automatic, so it turns itself on and off. But geez almighty, you know, the electric bill we got, what was almost 700 bucks this month? Something oh like God. that. Ouch. Yeah, ouch is right. Well, we've got to call Con Ed here, and they love to charge high prices. Oh, here I comes cool my I cool my whole house. I don't pay 150 See? I mean, but you don't also have Con Ed. Here comes Albert. He's down in Florida. It's hot in Florida, isn't it, uh, Albert? Always. That's why you come to Florida. No, <laughs> you go to Florida because you want to be nearer to Trump. That's not my reason. <laughs> How you far mean the family, the family I family? lived in Queens all my life, and he was as close to me as I could possibly get. Oh, so. When I used to go out to see Shecky, we always passed by original his original birth home. Well, actually, his birth, home, his birth home was a hit up the hill a little bit, and then they bought this giant <laughs> mansion. Does it, does it smell of garlic? Huh? Does it smell of garlic? Yeah, yeah right, right, right. <laughs> garlic around my neck as we passed it all the time. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, it was really, uh, you know, it's been it it, uh, it it's been uh, been toasty here. How much is your electric bill? This you have air conditioners, right? And you turn them on because it gets hot down there, right? Talking uh, to me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have uh, what? What, are they, what? They call it uh, what is it? That the whole house is is air conditioned. Yeah, central, 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 central air. Well, you have central air. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you have central air. 
how much is your electric bill every month during the summer? Uh, in the summertime, probably a little over a hundred bucks. Are you kidding me? Really? <laughs> and the air conditioning wow. is on all the time? Pretty much, yeah. yeah. It's, a, it's about 77 during the day and 73 at night. But, you know, sometimes you don't need it that much at night. Because... Close to, our bill was close to 700 this month. That's and insane. Air conditioners that we turn on. Huh? That's no good. Old window airs? Is that what you have, window air conditioners? No. That's why. No, yes. I have one. We, we do have window air conditioning. We only have two air conditioners we use at the most at a time. Otherwise, we blow fuses. But that, uh, but the bill without it is three hundred dollars without the air conditioning. Mm. So you know, a, a con Ed is like ripping everybody off. They're constantly raising their prices. Here, am I right, Francine? You can't shop a different a different provider in your. No, not really. Right, it's a monop it's a monopoly. So. No, but can't the, go somewhere else. The regulation, you, you've got the provider, and then you've got the one who you buy your electric from. No, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I had my business manager put me on one of those other plans. They were terrible. I wound up costing oh, me more. Where they yeah. predict what you're going to pay, you mean? Yeah, but not they, yeah. just whatever they were. I don't know. They just... Yeah. Yeah. I know this makes for interesting podcast conversations. So it's, it's good I would also about. look into uh, into Electric. a new business manager. What? I would also <laughs> look into a new business manager. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hear, I hear Albert's got some time available. Listen, this guy has been my business manager for 40 years. I'm not about ready to get rid of him now. Listen, money and sentimentality never should meet, ever. Exactly. Your cable yes. bill should be checked every year. Your bill for um, your phone, your cell phone should be checked every year. All your bills should be checked, and you should be looking for better prices at least once every two years but for better all of them. prices are con artists who come in and say you're going to get it cheaper, and then you sign up with them, and you don't get it cheaper. You find your first bill is double what it was before. Yeah, no, there it's – there. There's guys that, that will go out and calculate the rates. And once you sign on with that rate, that's what it is. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah. What, I, what are you what are you showing up there, Jeff? Is it nice and cool there? Looks is good. Oh, the water. You know, I, you know, I'm about ready to tell you to go blow yourself. <laughs> you know, I already did. <laughs> Oh, you're so funny. Hey, I don't, I don't, you know. You can come up. We're sweltering down here. You know, I often talked about the fact that there was a song by, uh, who was it? The uh, Summer in the City by the uh, Love and Spoonful. Love and Spoonful, yeah. And, and, it, and there's a beginning there where it goes. Da, 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 da. That's exactly how the heat feels. Mm -hmm. it's, you know, wouldn't you agree? <clears throat> Albert, you know what I'm talking yes, about. Yes, but but at, and true to the title, it only feels like that in a big city. I don't have that feeling down here. Oh it no, it's like that in a big city. If we exactly. if we had more trees here, mm -hmm. we would be cooler. But you yeah. know, they plant a tree here and there and there. Oh, thank you so much, City of New York. <laughs> I feel like I'm in a forest. You know. Um, <laughs> And and they just you know they never they never plant a whole bunch of it should be trees everywhere that would keep the city cool there should be grass wherever you can put it but there's you no don't live there. on the top floor which is a problem because the heat rises so uh, get away from that yeah I don't want to be on the bottom floor well then shelter there's no view yeah. down there yeah you know. The view is the the reason I don't go out in the first place. It's nothing but cement out there and people who are out to kill you. People. Yeah. I don't know. They say New York City is dangerous. Do you feel it, Francine? Um, no, not really. Um, not as much as I probably should. Arch, you know. You're out more than I am. Do you feel that this city is dangerous? I well, mean, you wouldn't go out for a stroll at night, that's for sure. No, your yeah. problem is you subscribe to that citizen thing where it's still you have crime in your neighborhood when it's happening. And so you <clears> they're going, boy, this neighborhood's go oh, it's it's dangerous out there. 
But you know, you didn't, you never, you haven't been mugged or anything like that, have you? And by the way, a lot of these crimes take place in broad daylight, so we're not talking about nighttime. Hmm. As long as long as people keep track of where I am, there's no danger here. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It, well, I'll tell you, it's all. It, uh, I I blame it all on Biden. It's all Biden's fault. Everything's Biden's fault. And that Kamala Harris, she's stupid. Stop it, Alex. Stupid. Stop it. <laughs> Kamala Harris is stupid. Enough. She's, he's, he, she was accused of that by a very stupid person. So. I'm going to leave. He's a I'm weird person. He's a weird person. I mean, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. She's stupid. Come on. You know, it'd just be really nice. All you got to do is say, hey, she's now my competitor. I wish her right. all the luck. And and here's what I'm going to do for you. But no, his whole yeah. speeches are nothing but she's stupid. She's got a wart on the end of her nose. I don't know. Whatever he can come up with. You know. And well, uh, well, I think it's I, interesting that you're trying to use logic to describe what he should yeah. do. Yeah. <laughs> he, he what does that say about really, you? <laughs> he can't really mock her physically because she's very pretty. She's very attractive. So hmm. that's his usual MO to, you know, to like, you know, he's a bully. So anything he can find, you know, that's hmm. what he goes for. But he really can't do that. So, you know. The reason he's that way is sexual tension. You just, someone remind me, where's his wife again? Where's what? <laughs> Outdating her personal uh, designer or whatever that the, the RNC pays eighteen thousand dollars a month for her stylist. Oh, her, his, who's this? I didn't hear Melania. About yeah. If you read through the documents of of the his campaign, eighteen thousand dollars a month goes to her stylist, yeah. who she's always out in public with and traveling with. And if you're donating money to his campaign, eighteen thousand goes to he, Melania to shut up. No, it goes to her for her stylist yeah. to pay for her yeah. stylist even though she's never in public on the campaign trail just out dating her her stylist wow is there any way i can pay marjorie for her silence <laughs> yes <laughs> run for office and and <laughs> your 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 uh the people who are donating to your campaign well anyway it's just you know i just uh, it's, uh i it, 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 uh, our good friend here, uh, uh, Albert, um, has lived in New York longer than I have. Between even the two times I lived in New York, he's lived here more than I have. And he's had to put up with Trump and came up with the best Trump impression I ever heard before Trump was even running for president. You know, and we would do it all the time on the air. Right, Albert? Uh, on occasion. Yeah, I'm not going to ask you to do it now because thank you. You know, but it's still the best Trump impression I've ever heard. Oh no, it's a cheap, it's a cheap impression, and and you know, it was back back in the time when nobody thought that that he could be a thing. You know, he was just a goofy guy, like he was throughout all the time he was in New York. He was just kind of a oh look there he is again. It, it was but, somebody to make fun of. Well, yeah, it was just a caricature. It, it, there wasn't even any, anything to latch on really to make fun of as there is now. It, it, it was just a caricature at the time. But it, yeah. he's became a, a, a completely different uh, entity since since he began his first run for president. Coming down the escalator. What's yeah, coming down the escalator, right. That was that was the time. Hmm. Hmm. Well, anyway, how you doing, Brian? <clears throat> well, I'm, doing not, good. I'm not bringing anything up here. I'm just saying, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I have a job. I'm doing good. Yeah. Uh, you, you, have job. you have a good job. You just got a, you just got uh, what? And promoted? Uh, yeah, sort of. So you back to my old back to my old job, which is. 24 7 so what, what okay is, yeah uh, which is being the head of your of the the office the site leader yeah the site leader so we have two we have that main headquarters we have two buildings here so i'm in charge of everything here for that what so. do you have to do go in and give pep talks and things like that 
Yeah, motivation speaker, those type of things. Really, do you do motivational speaking? Uh, <laughs> groups ask me to come in and, and do some speaking for them and do some exercises with them, you know, so. Yeah, been 20, over 20 years, so. All they, uh, make, I, all they make are little test tubes that here, whatever. <laughs> yeah, what you, I usually have a hundred. I have one right back here that you sent. Mm -hmm. they are. Is that the center of your business, basically? That wait a minute, hold on a second. Oh, right here, right here. That's the cartridge right here. Alex, he found it. What? He found it. Oh, he found. Yeah, it. When, when we when we made this technology, we did the cartridge, we do the instrument that this goes in, and we do all the chemicals and all the software. You can take a specimen. You put it in that thing. We just, we just do a sample. We put it in here. We close the lid, and, and we put this. It's all good to go. Yeah, our competitors have to do like one, if they check for one disease, they have to check like a whole batch of those only for one disease because they have to program it in the computer where our stuff is barcoded on the cartridge so we can actually test for, oh yeah, yeah, what's everyone calling me? So we can actually test for uh, any any disease, any time, any cartridge. So it's a big, it's a big uh, advantage. You, number, you can send a number of cartridges through and it can test for each of the different all, things. All different things. All of us can have a different thing we're checking for at the medical facility and they can check it right away. They don't have to wait for like 20 of those diseases that they're checking for, 20, you know, these say we do it right away. Ryan, do you work at Theranos with that girl with the strange voice? No, but no, I, no, but, no it's no. like Theranos. No, uh, you know what? I interviewed there. I interviewed there. I went through three sets of interviews and I actually met her and Sonny, the, 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 her, the oh, guy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really? Uh, yeah. I, I went through all the way to the end and then uh, they sort of made me an offer and then I, I got a big promotion here, so I stayed here. Tell me about the voice. Is that is that a legit thing? Did she and really she was it? wearing yoga pants, like she, they always <laughs> said that she did. And he he was like all frazzled and his shirt and everything, just just like I heard about. Wow. There there were about three or four people, but actually it's, it's about ten people that were here and went there or were there and came back came came here. Yeah, that's a big thing. Did you, at any point in talking to her, are people aware of what we're talking about? No, uh, I don't. They made a movie, several movies, yeah, and things like that. So, so fair enough. Said that she had a technology that could what cure anything? No, no, no. It, it was the same thing that we're doing. They're right. doing detection, but they tried to do a centrifuge in this big instrument where we are able to do it in this cartridge. The people who made our stuff is really, really genius. I mean, we compete now. We're past Roche. How come she's in jail? How come she's in jail and you're not? Because we did everything in the cartridge where they tried to do it in their in their instrument. And then they lied about everything yes, because they yes. said, oh, okay, yeah, take all your tests. And they, they said, uh, we'll do all your testing. And they had another outfit do all their testing. And they said it was them and it wasn't. I mean, the well, first, in it, other words, yours works and hers didn't work. Yeah. Exactly. Well, the part was well. her is that yeah, they didn't she, have the technology they said they had. So they went out and got other people to to take the test and said it was their technology that was doing it. Right, yeah. but their technology had a centrifuge in there. Yeah. It had a centrifuge in there, and they were blowing up all their systems and catching on fire. And, yeah, I, I know a couple of engineers that were there, and they just said it was really sketchy. <laughs> well, obviously. Yeah. yeah. Thank God I didn't go there. <laughs> it was like in the front of Time yeah. Magazine is like some kind of, you know, wonderkind who is going to save the world. Stanford if it worked, out, it right? would have been it would have been revolutionary if it worked, but it was all a scam. Yeah. 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 Well, our stuff worked. And then we we, you know, we did. I don't know if you guys remember, but we did the first things for for COVID. And when uh, uh, Trump couldn't say our name. He kept saying, uh, said Sepia. He kept saying Sepi, Sepia, se, se, and it was so funny because we knew he was going to talk about us because we were the first ones to have a forty-five minute test for COVID, and because we did flu already, so we were new. We knew it was going to be quick for us, and so we knew Trump started talking about it, and we go, "Oh, here he is. He's going to say our name now." And then he said that, and it was. Just well, like, let me oh, ask you this: oh. when when she started out and she got going, and you were with this company. Mm -hmm. Your company, did you say, oh, we're in real trouble of hers? No, 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 no. 
<laughs> no, because the vo the volumes that we make. So my first production plan was in uh, 20, uh, 2005, 2005, January. And it was for 164,000 of these cartridges. We do that in a half a day now. So we, we're, we're the volumes that we do. Nobody can keep up with us. That's why we've passed Roche and uh, yeah, BD, a couple other big companies. Are you on the stock exchange? Well, our 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 parent company is Danaher, and they are. Okay, and this and so it would be included in that package. Yeah, Danaher is a huge, huge corporation. They have like one two hundred companies under them. Um, oh. Yeah, they're they're pretty big, but they're very good because they let us run ourselves. So, yeah. Oh, okay. When they acquired us in 2016, they didn't come in and say, "Oh, we're going to start cleaning house." They they let us run because they knew we're a big money maker. Thank you for your service. You're welcome. Yeah. Well, what happened to you, Margie? Oh, she was. I said, yeah, yeah. Didn't stay. So yeah. we're just. I just. I just need another car. So I just like a, a little bit of a pandemic, maybe in in a couple months. Just a short one. <laughs> we don't have to kill that many people, but just you know, <laughs> yeah. I, I could use another car. A touch of the a touch of the cancer. Who said that, Alex? What? Oh, a, a little Richard said to me when he didn't make my show, I said, where were you? And he said, I'm sorry, I was back at the hotel. I had a touch of the cancer. <laughs> if we could get a touch of a pandemic, uh, I could yeah, look for I, another car. Too. I, I had a, yeah, I had a touch of the, uh, of the of the flu. I, I you know. But I mean, it's 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 wonderful what your company is doing. I'm just I didn't realize it was kind of the same thing she was trying to do, but that you accomplished actually. You know? Yeah, the guys who invented this, how the system actually works internally, is is pretty genius. Mm -hmm. Good. Hey, Charlie's falling asleep. Oh, there we oh. go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I so saw that. Maybe we should talk to you, Charlie. Keep you awake. <laughs> Sure. Well, you, well, obviously, you're tired. What are you tired from? I don't really know. I've been watching the Olympics all night, so I guess I've been. Uh, oh yeah, getting enough sleep. I would like to defend Charlie because I listened this morning to Friday's night show, and Charlie was the only one sticking up for the Olympics. And I think the Olympics are yeah. fine. The, the track and field was very interesting when you saw the finals and stuff like yeah. that. Listen, the I, finals are always interesting. It's all the other crap. You know what I don't like, though? I don't like when it's from Paris, because then they start leaking. And like those news things that you start talking about, Alex, they start leaking all the information of who won. They don't say like, oh, we're going to talk about the Olympics. If you're going to watch it live or if you're going to watch it, yeah. don't don't listen to us. They just start saying, oh, Biles won this. Oh, and we won yeah. this. And yeah. I'm like, I want to watch it later. Yes, yeah, exactly. you know, they shouldn't even re yeah. do those recap shows at night because of the, exactly that reason. You know, it, it, if you're watching Peacock, for instance, which we have, but we get for free because I get it through uh, uh, Instacart. They they give you a, a free version of Peacock. Uh, so we we're watching it through Peacock. It's just anything you want to watch is there. You know, you just go back and watch a rerun of Simone Biles doing her thing or whatever. The other thing that bothers me is Simone Biles can go out and win like 10 gold medals, right? And everybody goes, yeah, you won. she won 10 gold medals. Yeah, but she had a chance to win 10 gold medals. If you're the ten playing tennis, there's only one goal, okay? <laughs> you can't win like several golds in the tennis category. Yes, you can. Doubles. Doubles. Yeah, doubles, doubles and mixed doubles and mixed doubles. Mixed yeah. doubles. Oh. I don't even really like tennis in the in the Olympics. Things like tennis and golf and basketball, because you can just see that all the time. I, I think I want to. Yeah, I do think. I want to see the sports that like, you know, nobody can do that. Nobody can do pole vaulting. Nobody can do. You know, tumbling like I mean, well, some people can, but like, you know, the Ukraine woman won the high jump. That was great. Yeah, I agree. That's the kind of stuff I want to see. Yeah, I agree. Handball and, and table like tennis the all the way. The, the, uh, <laughs> I like the javelin catching. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> catching. Catching. Shot put catching is not as fun. 
Although some people think it's a smash. Well, we were just watching uh, the hundred year. What the uh, how many miles did, were they running? A mile and a quarter, something like that. Two point one miles. Two point one miles, and of course the uh, the Kenyans won. They always win. Yeah. Uh, mainly because they're they they're used to running from tigers. I think it's something. Like that. Oh yeah, lions. But uh, uh, and that was that was you know. Mm. Good to watch, but that's only good to watch for the last mile or the last uh, couple of laps because then they pick up speed, you know. Yeah. Until then, they're like stopping off to see grandma and they're uh, buying a Slurpee. And uh, okay, I think I'll run now, you know. And then at the end, they're going like crazy. So, you got to tell you a fun story, Alex? Sure. You always tell me fun stories. So, I do this walk every morning. It's about five miles with my dog through the neighborhood. And it's all residential with this tiny exception. And there is a, a synagogue on a corner. And the house next to it was on fire. It, it had caught fire and was burning down. And the local yeah. news folks were standing there trying to get someone local to make a statement about, yeah. you know, and I'm, I'm like, I don't know the people there. I walk by the house. And if I see somebody, I wave. And the lady says, well, can we get you on camera? Sure. Unfortunately, what I'm going to tell you didn't get broadcast, but she gets me on camera and she says, you know, you know, you're in the neighborhood, you walk by, you know, the people. I said, you know, I'm really suspicious with the synagogue next door to this house. Do you think their space laser misfired? <laughs> and the again. reporter dropped the microphone, so we can't put that on the air. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> what, what did you say? What did you say? I asked her if she thought that the because the synagogue was next door. Do you think that they misfired their space laser? <laughs> Space lady laser. dropped the microphone and oh yeah get out of here <laughs> it didn't make it on the news i didn't get the space laser part yeah oh they recorded it but it wasn't live unfortunately so well i i'd have, have been a guest on jimmy kimmel i think here, if it had years, gone out ago, of here. years ago when i was in san francisco like, well, we know uh, the, the today show wanted to come interview me because they had heard that i said that i was the only person that wasn't going to watch the super bowl which that year was <laughs> Santa was at uh, Stanford. Okay. The Niners in Miami. And I said, sure, if you want to interview me, I'm more than happy to. And so they came in and they said, okay, so why aren't you watching the Super Bowl? Why don't you watch the Super Bowl? I said, because quite frankly, I find it boring and I really don't understand how the game is played. And they said, so what do you do while the Super Bowl is on? And I said, I'm busy, ha busy having sex with all the women that were left <laughs> home alone because their husbands are out watching football. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Never got on <laughs> yeah. 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 I remember you. Why I'm not, they huh? asked me why I'm not watching the Super Bowl. I said, because I don't like baseball. <laughs> I remember you used to say you used to say you go to the mall. You used to say you go to the mall because all the women are there. Yeah. Well, you know the thing is, and this is uh, absolutely honest. To this day, I don't understand how football is played. I know I you find that impossible. Well, you're not a sports person, Alex. That's number one. What? You're not a sports person. It isn't. You don't have to be a sports person to know how. Oh, I don't know. Golf works. Yeah, or basketball. Is or pretty basketball. Easy. You got to yeah. get in the hoop. Right. You know. But football, it's like a bunch but of girls running at each other, running yeah. each other down, and then going, "We made it down." What the hell's a down? <laughs> yeah, I don't get that either. Yeah. If you grew up with it, you know what it is. I've had I've had major sports figures in the football field yeah. try to explain to me football. But I still don't get it. We have that in common. Really? I've never, seen, I've never seen a game. I've seen little bits and pieces of it. I have no interest. They I to... know basketball is soccer, except that they put the net up real high and you bounce with your hands instead of using your feet. I understand <laughs> soccer. I understand yeah. soccer. You know? Well, Soccer is is ice hockey, but they got rid of the ice and did it on the grass and got rid of those sticks. <laughs> yes. Just like, just like ping pong. Ping pong's nothing more than tennis when you don't have to stand on the table. Right, right. <laughs> don't try and understand rugby, Alex, if you think football is hard. He, he understands rug burns, but that's a whole other thing. <laughs> because I just have never seen, really seen rugby. I do know cricket. 
Another thing I've never heard of. Well, don't worry. You don't want to spend time with cricket because they go doing this whole boring thing for about three hours. Days. They tell you we'll come back tomorrow and finish the game. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, like the- I'm sorry. What? 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 You know, Cr- cricket. A match can take days. Yeah. And they break for tea. Yeah. These- there's it's worse than that movie. cricket that sang to Pinocchio. There's a great movie. I've never been able to get Marjorie to watch it, but I have it called uh, Lagan. And it's an Indian movie. And it's about a, 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 a back in the colonial days of rule by, by England, uh, a, a village in India. And Lagan was a tax they would levy on the towns and on these villages. And this particular village, they were going to give them a Lagan that was way too far expensive. And they said, well, we'll bring it down if you will uh, play a game of cricket with us. And if we win, you play du- pay double the Lagan. And if you lo- if we lose, we'll let you have no Lagan ever for the rest of your life, Okay. So that's the movie. And it's got some dance numbers. It's an Indian film. It's got some dance numbers. But it it's an amazing way to learn how cricket is played because these people who never played cricket in their life are learning how to play it. And so you go along with them. And that's how I learned how, how to play cricket. You know, and I'm here to tell you it's the most boring game ever invented. <laughs> What yeah. other sport do you get a break for tea? Well, yeah, 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 and you have this thing called a wicket, and it's on a stick. And if you accidentally hit the wicket and knock the pegs off, you've lost part of the game or something. I can't remember. Um, 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 Albert's a, a big, big cricket fan, aren't you, Albert? <laughs> I used to play cricket. Did you really? I was younger, yeah. When I was when I was in high school, I played cricket. And um, where I did got you a, go to school? Eaton? <laughs> no, I was in the uh, in the Indian part of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> we had, so we had a cricket team, and it, it's mm. you know, I was on the team for uh, a few days. I only played one game, mm-hmm. uh, and it was fun. It was good fun. You enjoyed it, if you believe it. Yeah, I enjoyed it. <laughs> a lot of people. A lot of people think it's like baseball, but it's not really like baseball. But you do have a bat. I, I couldn't tell you anything about it. I know nothing about it. I, I, I better bat. Uh, I better um, uh, stop this now because I could be boring everybody. <laughs> I might fall asleep. Yeah. So you woke you woke me up. What? Yeah. yeah. We're it's talking perfect. about cricket, everybody. <laughs> yeah, all of us. The yes, Queens, we, too. Yes, we were. Uh, so anyway, I'm, I'm I'm trying to think of what else we uh, what what else needs to be talked about. We talked about the weather. We talked a little bit about the election, which is just mm. you know, Speaking about weather, it, there's a hurricane coming toward uh, Albert there. Isn't it? Yes, it's, it's already passed. Weather. Already gone. Oh, oh already gone. Gone. Did you see the story in the news about RFK Jr. leaving a dead bear cub in Central Park? Yeah, I like that. What was that all about? Supposedly, he found this thing dead. Something, or I don't know. He he found it dead hiking and decided that he was going to take it home and skin it and eat it. But he left it in his trunk and went out to dinner at Jay Luger's and thought, well, by now the meat's bad. So he put it in Central Park and staged it like someone had hit it with a bicycle oh. and, and thought, I guess, thought it was funny. But what, what, we keep calling Trump weird. This guy's trying to yeah. trying to one up him. You know, Andrew, following that story, I had an idea. You know what we really need? We really need a debate between Trump and and rfk jr yes (laughs) i said that this morning i love that you said it oh Oh, man that that would be entertaining forget about kamala i want to see rfk debate himself (laughs) (laughs) debates debate yeah 
I mean, what, what, at what time ever in the history of this country have we ever had anything this friggin' weird? Just yeah. weird, creepy, odd, unexplainable. I mean, I still want to know what a black job is, and I want to know. <laughs> I want to know. I want to know what what, what age what age I'm supposed to turn black. If <laughs> it seems like it's something that you could do, and I think it'd be fun to, for a while. I want to know when Camel became went from Indian to being black. Well, well the, here's the thing: the argument. Is this with, is really funny because the argument is that when she won the <clears> Senate, <throat> the AP had said she's the first Indian woman in the Senate. Well, they didn't say the first Indian or black woman because she wasn't. There have been black women in the Senate before. So yeah. that part of her, it, it there was no exclusion of black. There was already black senators. So she was the first. Yeah. Well, here's the part that gets me. He says, I don't know. Is she Indian? Is she black? I don't know what she is. Well, I'll tell you, 30 years ago, she had tried to rent an apartment from you and your his father. Uh, they wouldn't rent to her. Either, so, either yeah. part of her. He's something <laughs> they don't like. Yeah. Well, if you're if you've if you've got a, a a Scottish mother and a Nazi father from Germany who pretended to be Scandinavian for years, are you Scottish or Nazi? I don't I don't know, because when when Trump changed his name to Trump, told everyone that he was from, uh, I think it was Norway or Sweden, because he thought that the New York business wouldn't do business with the German. So so if, if you've got an issue with identity. Yeah. You, you're kind of the poster. Oh, the name was there, the name uh, was Donald. Drum. The name was Drumf. Yeah. yeah. E H. Yeah. 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 You have to pronounce his name properly too. If he can't say Kamala, he is Don Old. <laughs> <laughs> Don Old. Yeah. Don Old and Shady Vance. I don't know if we're not talking about too much politics. On That's the... not politics. <laughs> That's we're we're, we're talking a, about reality I, TV. I got to admit what you just said was kind of true that there's not politics in any of this no think about it it's all just weird you know yeah. it's it's a it was something weird that's happened to our country and the only sanity and i think here i get political the only sanity is kamala she's yeah, don't, don't reduce it to that you. Totally. She isn't. She isn't the alternative. She's actually a really good candidate. She's a brilliant mm -hmm. woman with an incredible mm -hmm. career with mm -hmm. good ideas. I don't. I'm not. I'm not buying into this that she's she's the the leftover we have to stick with. Wait she's a minute. A she did. A, she's a brilliant a brilliant candidate she's and going to be minority high. She's a minority hire. Yeah, Stop DEI, talking. Yeah. Stop talking. The DEI about is uh, Donald, Eric, and Ivanka. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, what were you going to say, uh, uh, Alvin? I was going to say, we, we, we got to stop talking about whether she's Indian or black or woman. She is the most qualified person yes. to become the president yes. of the United yeah. States. This is what we want. Someone yes. who is the most qualified person to do the job. That's yes. it. I don't care what they look like, whether they're in a wheelchair, whether they're from this place or that place. If they are the most qualified mm. person to take care of the citizens of this country... They should be, get the consideration that they deserve, period. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but the next um, argument is whether she puts pineapple on pizza. <laughs> but she also has the, an she also has the, but, but, also has the charisma. Yes. You know, that, that's required. I, like Hillary was great. She was a, like a good brain, but she didn't have the charisma. She wasn't likable enough. And, I, and you know, I, I don't know. Like, Those I don't, I mean, a lot of people, everybody voted for it, but. Uh, Biden never had charisma. Right. Right. But, you know, um, he, he was a president, the vice president. And he had, you know, he had that going for him, but. But she's got charisma, so she'll, that's, that's great. This, this kind of screws up, uh, what's his name? The uh, governor from California, the Newsom. This kind of screws up yeah. his chances in the next couple of years, doesn't it? Because whoever gets to be vice president is probably going to be the front runner for the next president eight years from now. Usually. Usually. Yeah. Usually. Although I don't Nothing's know. Nothing's been usual lately. Yeah. Well, we'll soon find out who her, who her running mate is. They have to do it in the next couple of days because um, yeah, they know. get on the ballot in every yeah. state. Yeah, the seventh yeah. is sort of the deadline. Well, she's going to she's gonna do it in Philadelphia. She's going to bring the... Mm -hmm. 
the cho the chosen appointee on on stage with her. So yeah. yeah. Can it be me? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um uh, um is this a press conference or is this the is that the presidential seal? Yeah, this is my presidential seal. This is this oh, is for oh, your... Well, I, me, oh. I'm going to go back to the office. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I heard yeah, all believe it or not, this is what he does for a living. He sells the stuff that makes this work, right? No, I don't. Oh, you no, don't? I did. We we made a course during COVID and sold it. I it's a, it's available for free. We we put it out there for free. Anybody who wants to learn how to uh, use all the software. visuals and everything. I don't. This is I'm. I do. I do business consulting work. No, but I mean, all the visuals that you're doing here are included in that study no, you, program. No, those are just. It teaches you how to set it up to do that with your own images. Oh, okay. These aren't even mine. I stole them off the internet. Look who's coming here. Um, Mike Chisholm is about to join us. Uh, Mike is up in Canada, and. Uh, uh, uh apparently he has, hasn't turned his oh there we go there we go there he is hello mike how you doing better late than never or uh you thought you got away with it depending on whichever one you want either way it's yeah. good to see everybody from my end how y'all doing canada i don't want to see your end <laughs> <laughs> i get that a lot <laughs> we had a little bit into politics today although it, again it isn't politics it's weird what weird is going on in America, I think, was what it was. Hmm. But um, uh, what did I, I heard something about Canada recently, about some politics up there. Is there anything happening there that's unusual? Well, there's a lot of people who don't like our prime minister, Alex. A lot of people. And that, but, would, uh, that would be Trudeau. That would be Prime Minister Trudeau, yeah. And it's funny because as a boy growing up, I didn't know very much about politics. But one thing I did know was that a lot of people didn't like our Prime Minister Trudeau. So how many times things are the same <laughs> after all these years? Yeah. Like, seriously, there's a picture of... Okay, Revelstoke. Okay, talk about Revelstoke for a second. Uh, with our boy... Uh, is it Revelstoke Bill? No. Revelstoke Jim. Oh, Jim. Revelstoke Jim. Okay, there's a picture of our Prime Minister Trudeau, his father, who was also a Prime Minister of Canada. There's a picture of him at the end of the Canadian Pacific Railway where he came to do some sort of an event and he got booed and there's a picture of him in a caboose giving the old middle finger to everybody. And uh, that's prime minister Trudeau senior. So yeah, a lot, you know, growing up, some things just never change. Yeah. Now do you like Trudeau or don't you like Trudeau? Um, well, it's funny because, you know, at first when we saw this um, package of youthful vigor and, and energy, who, uh, you know, liked the same music that a lot of us liked and was, was more contemporary, and he wanted to legalize weed. Well, we got to give this young fella a shot. I think that definitely we want to make that happen. But uh, unfortunately, a couple terms in, and he seems to be uh, um, not as good economically. And, 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 and frankly, free speech is kind of under attack. So that's kind of the way I look at that. As but at least weed is legal, so you don't need to talk to anybody. Well, that's just it, you know. I mean, who needs to? But the thing is, when when don't you want free speech if you're allowed legal weed? Those are two ironic statements, you know. You think that it, with the legalization of I weed, smoke speech, pot, I became very more. I'm very uncommunicative. Yeah, so really, you know, you know, I freedom of speech if you're high on pot. <laughs> I think the problem is you keep electing those Canadians for that role. I've got this orange guy that's looking for work. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I know. What's, I know you guys like your Chinese food. I've got a big orange chicken for you. <laughs> well, you know, it's it's funny. Funny. it'll be One thing, it'll be good for you. It, I hear you absolutely. like donuts. <laughs> it goes right with the Tim Hortons. But you've got all these countries that seem to, since Trump has shown up in the U.S., you've got all these countries that have these outrageous characters that are rising to the top. You have Boris Johnson, some of these other folks that are, have risen up we haven't a knock on wood as I say this. We haven't gotten one of those up here yet. We haven't gotten anybody who's outrageous. What about Bob and Doug um, like McKenzie? You guys have seen down there. Wow. You get Bob and Doug McKenzie in there? Oh, in a heartbeat. They get my vote. Either hey. one of them, Frank. Hey, you hoser. Charlene hasn't said a word today. I just want to say hello to Charlene. Hi. Hello. How are you hello. doing? That's good. 
What's new in your life? Anything? Mm-hmm. My husband and I just celebrated our 43rd wedding anniversary. Wow. Hey, congratulations. Wow. Congratulations. congratulations. Yeah. 43 congratulations. years. It's very amazing. good. Mm-hmm. Isn't it amazing yeah. that we, we go, wow, 43 <clears throat> years. So, when I was a kid, nobody ever got divorced. You know, <laughs> you just stayed together no matter what. Hell or high water. Uh, but uh, now somebody goes on a show and goes, yeah, my husband and I have been married for 10 years. And the audience applauds. <laughs> Marjorie, how long have we been married? Quick. I have to count. 12 years. I don't know that numbers. He's absolutely right. 12, right, 12 years. <laughs> I think it was 2012, wasn't it? Two will be my 29th. I know that because I got married in 2012. Ah! Did we get married in 2012 or was it 2011? I'm trying to remember. It was, no, because remember, I got married on Leap Day. And you had a significant thing on Leap Day, I thought. Because she... That's, she, 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 was on Leap that's Day. right. So, yeah. so I got married on the same day you two proposed to each other. And then about 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 a month later, two months later, we were in California, and we just decided, oh, I'm going, I'll go up to Nevada. I wanted to take her up to Nevada because I always like that ride going up there. And uh, she's uh, uh, and we decided, oh, why don't we go up there and get married? So we we bought rings and we went to Lake Tahoe and we found somebody who married people, and we and then later took the photos. Yeah, she took photos and then. We had to go sign the uh, the uh, marriage licenses, and we did that at McDonald's. <laughs> was Shecky there, or was it a week after that you saw Shecky? She, no, Shecky was. We then went back after getting married, back down okay. to in the San Francisco area, Bay Area, in time to meet Shecky, who met there us at the Disney Museum in the uh, in the Presidio. And awesome. uh, and and we uh, we walked up to him. We said, "Hey, listen, we have a surprise for you." And he looked at us before we even tell him. And says, "You got married." <laughs> <laughs> you know, because we were close enough to Nevada and so on. But we were married in California, technically, right? Not Nevada. Marjorie, yeah, do you remember really? it? Remember it? Or you completely washed you know it out of your mind. Yeah. What? You know that area better than me. I'm an East Coast person. Oh, so you don't even know where you got married. Uh, I got married. She in likes the- to wipe it out of her mind. It's a, <laughs> a tragic moment that, you know, is so bad that the, you just, you just, I don't remember it happening. Yeah, you know what? I'm going the other way. I think there are these cloudy, there's these cloudy spots here, and then there's border crossing and whatnot. All right, there's a chance you two aren't actually married. I, I, I'm, I'm going to bet on that. <laughs> could be could be and then we went to see the, uh, an eight hour movie or how long is that movie it was almost eight hours something like eight hours they gave us a dinner break Abel Johnson's, uh, Abel oh. Johnson's silent film Napoleon with a complete symphony orchestra playing it it was wonderful wow. yeah. yeah that's awesome well Shecky and I had planned to go do this and then Marjorie wanted to go to California with me. And as long as she came to California, we managed to get her a couple of tickets a few rows back. And uh, so we all went. And then we had a, there's a dinner break in the middle of the movie and so on. Yeah. Okay, so question. Shecky's your boy. You guys are connected. You're best friends at this point. Before Marjorie got out there, did you and Rick talk about that? Like, you're like, yeah, you know what? I think I'm considering, you know, maybe... If the right time happens, we're gonna we're gonna get hitched. Did you guys talk about that at all no. beforehand? No, not no. at all. It was a no. last minute thing. Yeah, we literally put the flowers at the supermarket. We surprised ourselves. You yeah, know. <laughs> yeah. We bought the flowers at a supermarket. You know, and uh, we uh, we went up there, and then we spent the night. We we spent the night at a uh, very nice. It was so day. cold. Remember, it was snowing. What was it? The was it the Hilton? No, it wasn't a Hilton. It was a. It was something else. Uh, anyway, it was snowing. Motel it six. Snowing. It was, <laughs> but it was lovely. And they because we got married, they comped us a cabin or or yeah, it was a cabin. cabin for the same price as a as a hotel room. So it's very, right very nice. I was, you know. And then the rest of it was the marriage. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Love you, dear. 
I really anyway, do. Charlene, congratulations. You made it. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thirty-seven. Who made years? it? They said it. They said it would oh. never work. Oh, they said it would never work. Yeah. <laughs> did they say oh, that? Really? Mm -hmm. All his friends did. Probably all my friends too. We were like total opposite. Why did people. they think it wouldn't work? <laughs> Just because he was like a real um like running around and going to bars and stuff like that. And then so all his friends didn't think that he would it would work. But uh, he stopped doing all that. So <laughs> well, well, you, what happened is you married him and he figured, hey, it's this is better than doing that. I yeah. think so. Yeah. 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 So that's wonderful. Congratulations. That's Thank you. You know, yes, uh, Jeff. How about this 37 years. You've been married. Wow. Yeah. I'm pushing You're 30. Much younger woman, too. Who that's said right. they're pushing 30? Andrew. Andrew, Almost congratulations. That's It'll good. be this year's 29. 29 really? years. Married. You're not married, are you, uh, Francine? Yeah, um, uh, 13 years. Oh, you are married. Okay. Yeah. Years. Yeah. Okay. Were you married before that? Yes, I was married to, to Gil, who was married to, to his cousins with your oh, ex wife. Yeah. So we were, you and I were cousins for a while, technically. Good ex wife. Oh, wow. Yeah. Small uh, Susan. Wife. Su Susan. Yeah. And um, Gil, my first husband, was uh, her cousin. And that's how I met you. <laughs> we were at Thanksgiving. And you came to my mother's wedding. I don't know if you remember that. It was in an apartment. You know, my my mother was married to my first husband's father. Okay. we So we were technically stepbrother and stepsister. But, you know. We were grown up. We were grown can you up. Get a chance. Can you send me a diagram of this? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. But yeah, so yeah, so I'd been married. Yeah, so yeah. I was your cousin for a short time. Yes. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Uh, and I, I, I guess he's raising his hand because I was probably married to him. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I have an observation and then a question. Uh, the observation is Francine. Uh, there's something that's a little bit titillating or a little bit hot about that. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's I know. Cool. That's, that's I know. Super, cool. I was going to say we were stepsister and brother, but not in a porno way, you know? <laughs> well, I'm just saying, yeah. There's something yeah, a little, yeah. there's right. something a, little right. uh, a little salacious in a good a way about that. about that. I, I according, there you go. The second, according, the second you know, Mike, question. Mike, according to the, the DNA test that I got from Brian's company, Alex is not my father. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God. Yeah. yeah, Francine, that's awesome. The second thing uh, is the question. So does that mean that you were in-laws, but now you are outlaws? We're, yes. You, well, and Alex, actually... you and Alex were in-laws, and now you're right. outlaws. Right, yeah, like that That all fell apart. <laughs> Confusing. So, yeah. I was never married to you, was I? <laughs> no, but like, no, we were, but we were technically cousins by marriage, so. Yeah. Well, let's see. You only uh, uh, Albert's only been with one uh, when one marriage of mine, right? Yeah, only Susan. I mean, only uh, uh, what's, what's her name, Marjorie. Alex, <laughs> <laughs> don't help him. Don't help him, anybody. Susan, <laughs> Susan was, out my, of this was my wife before I met you, Barbara. Yeah, when we were talking about here a moment ago, and the reason I said Susan was because she said Susan, that's right? I right. Was that was, mind and I yeah. said Susan. So, so that was Gil's cousin, right? Yes, Marjorie is the only one. Albert, <laughs> what? What? He still hasn't figured it out. I still didn't hear what you said. All I'm saying is, you the only person you be married to was uh, Marjorie. Right, 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 and the one, the one that didn't get away. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> long and scratching, but she couldn't get away. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like Pepe Le Pew. Oh, right, exactly. You know, he's a guy who always calls at the last minute. Okay. Oh, don't he's tell our me. Our last minute man. Don <laughs> Giller. <laughs> Is it Don Giller? 
It's yep. killer what the yeah. He's our, our low rent guy. The Alex Bennett program pop up show, Last Minute Man. Oh, John. That time. I can't I've see him. He's in camouflage. I've been single for 45 years. There it is. Mm -hmm. You're married? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Oh, okay. Is there a reason why you haven't gotten married? Uh, a personal choice or everybody else's? There, there, there are legal issues here. <laughs> sure she's not buried under that pile of crap behind you? <laughs> <laughs> Something smells and I don't know what it is. <laughs> well, you've always, it looks to me like you've always been a loner. Thank you. <laughs> Let me show you my guns. <laughs> you need to hold your arm up like this now. You've always been a loner. Would you loan me some money? Thank you very much. But I'm, I'm, I may owe you 10 bucks by tomorrow. Really? Yeah. So how would you get I it? Make a bed. Yeah. Uh, I'd zoom it. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, no, you don't zoom money. You was uh, you zell, zell it. You what's the zell. other thing? Zell. zell, zell. What's the other thing besides zell? Venmo. 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 Yeah. I Venmo. Yeah. I've never used. Don't accept PayPal. Well, you Don, you don't do Venmo, do you? Uh, when I was young. <laughs> All right, got to go to work. Bye, 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 everybody. <laughs> bye, Brian. Bye. We're we're closing off here. Anyway. Bye. Thank you. Nice talking to you again. Hey, Bryce, sorry about your friend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. What about his friend? What? Much love. Much love yeah. to you. Yeah. yeah. Bye, Brian. Much love. Bye. My friend. Okay. Bye bye. What? what hey, hey, hey. Can't even get off. What problem with uh, of his? He had a friend pass away. Yeah. Oh, pass really? away. Who, who was it? Maybe uh, uh, somebody in the car community. Huh? Yeah. One of his car buddies. A car buddy. Oh, okay. That's too bad. Hey, listen, we're running over time, but the only reason I'm doing that is so that Giller has to spend more time with us than he wanted to. So, <laughs> but uh, I, I I enjoy this. I just love this show. You know, I wish yeah. show I did was like this one. You know, a bunch of nice people like each other. And actually, we're shy three people here. If we had them on today... We probably would have set a record here. Hey, Mandy, come on in here. Uh, <laughs> who? Mandy. Are you pulling a joke there on us? <laughs> pulling something. Anyway, thank you, Marjorie. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you uh, joining me at the hospital today. My pleasure. Sit in a room with a bunch of people with cancer. It's wonderful. It's wonderful. <laughs> Uh, and uh, then uh, thank you also to Charlie. Uh, always good to see you. Andrew Deutsch, I'm sorry you're so funny because I yeah. I would like to be the only funny one here, but unfortunately you got me beat. I apologize profusely. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Charlene, congratulations and always. Congratulations. Yeah, really. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. And Francine, love seeing you at that bookstore again here. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, Jeff, have a nice time. When are you coming back from uh, Maine? You're muted. Turn your audio on. Your audio's on. You're muted. Your audio is off. You're muted. I don't know if we have time left. To... I was, I'll be here in uh, 10 days. 10 days you're coming back. Okay. All right, then we'll probably see you on the show from Maine again next week. Thank yeah. you very much, Albert. I appreciate it. I really you know, I enjoy you on the show. You know that. And I got to call you because I need to do some more interviews with you. Uh, what, do you what, uh, what was that look? I was just uh, thinking how great that would be. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> again. We got to get together and do some more interviews. Okay. It's slowly turning. There we go. Now he's thinking about it. All right. And also, I want to do one with you, Mike. You wrote me about it, and we got to do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, and actually, yeah, there's a couple of things I want to talk to you about. Actually, I might even talk to you about them on the air. Uh, yeah, that'd be great. Let's do it soon. Okay, and Don Geller, God damn it, I love the way you call. Last minute. <laughs> you let me know I have one minute left. Are we still on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, thanks to Don Geller. And now, of course, the lovely and attractive Edward Berger, who signs off by saying... That's all, folks. Bye-bye, everybody. Have a nice week. Bye. Next week. Love, kids. Bye.